John, we know from our cosmologist friends that the future of the universe is unquestionably bleak. Either we will expand into virtually nothingness or collapse into a fiery explosion that will destroy everything. Either way, everything that we know in any way whatsoever will disappear. And most likely, everyone says now, the universe will expand until right. there's just random radiation and then barely even that. Obviously, that's hugely conflicting with any uh, biblical view of the future. How do you reconcile the physical reality with the, uh, with the uh, biblical promise? Well, I think we need to take seriously the fact that science predicts that eventually all carbon-based life will disappear from the universe wherever it is. So the future is brief. It's going to end in, in futility. But science is telling a story we should pay attention to, but it's only telling one story. It's telling what you might call the horizontal story, the unfolding of present process. And if things go on as they are at the moment, then that's how they're, that's how they're going to end. However, Britain believes there is another story to tell, what you might call a vertical story, a story of God's faithfulness. And that means that the last will not lie with death, either for you or me, or with cosmic death for the universe, but will lie with the faithful creator. And I believe it is a perfectly coherent belief, and one hope that I embrace, that there will be a destiny, both for ourselves and for the universe, beyond our deaths, in that, in that sense. That's something that science can neither speak for or against. It, that is a transformation of the world, a redemption of the world, if you like, into a new form of life, a resurrection of, of a dead universe, if you like, a resurrection of, of dead people. That's a, a religious hope, which science can neither deny nor, nor confirm. Well, certainly science would say that is, uh, from its own perspective, uh, impossible because it, it violates every possible physical law. And I think we would agree that it violates physical law. Well, it's certainly, yes, but what is physical law? From the religious point of view, physical law is the expression of the Creator's will for the character of, of creation. And I believe that God's creative purposes are, in fact, intrinsically two-step purposes. This universe ex exists as the first part of God's creation. It exists at some distance from its, the veiled presence of its Creator. It's a world in which uh, creatures are allowed to be themselves and to make themselves. That's the theolo theological way of thinking about an evolving universe. And, of course, the history of our universe, both at the level of terrestrial life and also the universe itself is a, is a history of evolution. That's, that's, that's a particular sort of world. But I think God's eventual purpose is to draw creation into a closer relationship with the divine life that we have mm. in this world. Mm. Uh, if God was simply unveiled, sort of naked divinity in this world, we, we finite beings would be overwhelmed by the infinity of the divine presence. So we have to have this distancing, but eventually, if we freely choose it, we will be drawn into, into relationship with God. And that means that God will transform the world. Um, not just, not, I'm talking not just about a destiny for human beings beyond death, but the whole universe beyond death. It will be a resurrected world in that sense, and the life of that world will be different. The Creator will will it to have a different kind of, of physical processes, physical processes in, in it. In this world, everything ends in futility, basically because the second law of thermodynamics says that in the end, disorder always wins over order. There are so many different ways of being disorderly. There's no reason to think that God couldn't bring into being a world with such strong self-organizing principles that that drift to chaos and, and, and uh, disorder was no longer part of it. And I think that is the world ahead. But it will be the transform of this world. So this world isn't just thrown away. It is transformed into a new world. And because a Christian, I believe that process actually has begun by the resurrection of Jesus within, within uh, history. Because I believe that the Lord's risen and glorified body is the transform, the seed event, if you like, for the growing of a new creation. So let's split it into the two parts uh, right. in terms of your vision for the, right. for the future. One on the personal level, second for the universe. So on right. a personal level, uh, what are some things we can begin to say about our personal destiny in such a resurrection? Well, I think the main thing we can say is that there will be such, a, be such a destiny. It's an argument that Jesus made when the Sadducees, who didn't believe in a destiny beyond death, came to argue with him. And he reminded them that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he said to them, the God, not of the dead, but of the living. And you see, the point of the argument is, if the patriarchs mattered to God once, and for sure they did, 
and God is the faithful God, they will matter to God forever. Similarly, if you and I matter to God once, we will matter to God forever. So there must be a destiny beyond, beyond our test, which will be brought about by, by God's, God's um, resurrecting, recreation of ourselves in this new environment. And we will retain our individual personalities, not be melded into some cosmic consciousness? Well, I see it that way, yes. I don't think we are drops of being to be restored to the ocean of being, which, which some religious traditions speak about. It is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in their individuality, you and me, in our individuality, who are to live in the kingdom of God. And that is an, an eternal existence. That's a no more... It's an everlasting existence, in my view. In my view, we should distinguish between... Uh, eternity, which is a timeless existence that God possesses, and everlasting existence, which is an unfolding um, process. I believe it's as, just as I believe in I believe in the resurrection of the body, because I believe it's intrinsic for human beings to be embodied in some fashion, obviously in a different fashion in the world to come. Otherwise, we should just be made alive again in order to die again. I think it's also intrinsic for us to be temporal. I think time is a constituent of what it means to be a human being, mm. and there will be time in the world to come. There will be an unfolding process, first of all of purgation and judgment, as we are cleansed of the dross of this life, and then I think an un endless unfolding of the exploration of the riches of the divine nature as they are progressively uh, revealed to us in that life of the world to come. So the world to come is going to be interesting. It's not going to be sitting on a cloud <laughs> just strumming a harp and singing hallelujah. It's going to be extraordinarily exciting and fulfilling, I think. Well, that sounds uh, very attractive. I, I, I hope, uh, I hope if, uh, if, if it's true that I will, uh, we will see each other together. Oh, I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and have, a, and have a, a, certainly a, a more enriching conversation at that point. Yes, more informed, I think. What about the universe itself? Well, I think our destiny and the universe's destiny lie together. I've been speaking about the new creation, this world where the laws of nature have been transformed by their creator into a form that doesn't make death the end, the end of everything. And I think that new creation is going to be the transform of the old creation. So God doesn't just wipe the slate clean, throw away the old universe, say, I'll start again and try and do better the second time. So I think that the universe has a destiny beyond its death in that transformed way. And again, I think that's in my Christian understanding, that's anticipated by the resurrection of Christ. The tomb was empty because the Lord's dead body had been transformed into his glorious uh, risen body with different properties. God, he appears, appears and disappears and things, things like that. So I think our destiny and the destiny of the universe will lie together in that great world of the new creation.